Hey, thanks for checking out Nuts and Bolts with Tone, and welcome to my channel. Today we have a 1999 Nissan Frontier 3.3 liter engine with leaking valve cover gaskets. Yes. So I'm going to walk you through how to do these valve cover gaskets. I'm also going to give you the tips and tricks on the easiest way to get this job done. Uh, there are a couple of hoses that are that are really, really common to break um, or leak, be a real, real bugger to do this job. Uh, also, sometimes, actually, sometimes you see when I the first time I ever did one of these, uh, I took a whole bunch of stuff apart that I didn't need to. And so I'm going to help you not do that. And uh and just to make it easier. So let's get into it. Let's check it out. All right, here we go. We got a 1999 Nissan 3.3 liter engine. This is a Frontier. It's in a lot of models. This one has leaking valve cover gaskets. Very common to leak. You see what it looks like right there? It's all caked on. Underneath the exhaust is really bad the cat and stuff like that. Usually you get it in and people will complain of smoking. This one was white sm or smoke from under the hood and it's smoking because the oil is leaking down in the exhaust. And usually these Phillips bolts are so, they're, they're leaking, so they're like loose. You could like just take them out with your hands. That PCV hose on that side and all those connectors on, on, on top is really only the tricky thing on that side. We're gonna start with the driver side. The driver's side is tricky because you have this intake air tube and it likes to crack and break. So you got to be real, real careful. But honestly, if it's going to break, it's going to break. We're going to start by disconnecting that hose clamp right there. And that plastic tube is going to stay with the car. We're going to disconnect the worm drive clamp there. We're going to release the clip on that zip tie. We're going to reuse that later. We're going to disconnect the mass airflow sensor. We're gonna disconnect the other end of the intake air tube at the throttle body, and we're gonna disconnect these connectors. You have to actually push the center of the connector towards the TPS or towards the mass airflow sensor, and if you push it forward and wiggle the connector, you can usually get it to pop out. We're gonna start by disconnecting the two air injection hoses connected to the engine. We're gonna leave them on the intake air tube. Be real careful, they like to crack and break, and they become very brittle. Okay, intake air tube is off. This one did crack. Uh, I'm gonna lube it up and try to get it back on, and it, doesn't, it didn't break all the way through, so hopefully it's gonna be okay. But the air injection hoses, they did break, they split. And what happens if you wiggle them side to side and pull back, you can get them off. The problem is they split, so when you push them back on, they break wide open. This is common on anything older. You get Toyotas, all of them. They all do it. Uh, this guy doesn't want to, they don't want to fix anything. So hopefully it'll be enough to not set a code. Um, then what we're going to do is we're going to disconnect the throttle cable. And we're going to unclip it out of all the connections. We're going to disconnect the two TPS connectors. We're going to disconnect the plug wires. There's three of them. The one in the back. Disconnect it from the distributor cap and pull the wire to the side. And once you get the intake plenum off, you can disconnect it. We're going to pull out all the plug wires. And we're going to disconnect the plug wires from the clips. We're going to disconnect the ground wires and this harness. Because we have to unbolt this plenum and move the plenum and get it out of the way. Alright, so I'm going to show you a new tool that I just found. Uh, right here, Matco, there's the part number. Uh, this thing opens up. And it's like a universal crow's foot. Uh, this just worked on that EGR pipe and, and worked like a charm. So I'm definitely buying one of these next week when Matco comes. So we're going to disconnect this EGR pipe. All right. There's two coolant hoses in the back. On this one, I'm just going to cut them uh, and then replace them. Uh, they're easier to replace and just put back on. They get really brittle and old. So I went ahead and removed all the wires and pulled all the wires out just to get them out of the way. Unbolted all this harness here. 
Now we gotta disconnect this PCV hose here because this is attached to a pipe that's attached to the intake manifold. So you can see that when I wiggle this intake manifold, that that pipe is attached. So, and you have six Allens right here. Uh, you gotta take those out. I use I use the carbine tools uh, six millimeter work like a charm it didn't round any of the hexes off at all this is actually the first time I've ever done one of these and not had my allens partially round the, the, the bolts and I've done a lot of these things back in the day uh, so you're gonna disconnect all the harnesses and all it is is it sits on a clip like this so you're just gonna pull it forward and then disconnect the connector and you're just gonna tuck those back there you have the O2 sensor wires here just disconnect those is disconnect all this we're gonna pop all these clips they're all gonna break you're just gonna pop all this loose uh, and then tuck the harness that way we're gonna disconnect this PCV hose here to get this valve cover out uh, and then uh, I don't think I'm gonna mess with the fuel lines uh, you don't need to mess with the fuel lines but if you did you could just disconnect right here and just disconnect here and then you could just fold these up and out of the way I don't think I need to take those off we're gonna leave those for now and back here show you when I take it apart there's an elbow hose right down there that we're gonna cut and there's one more back there and I think it's uh, I think it's shaped like this and then it comes like this and then up. I'll show you guys when I get it off. It's been a while since so I took one of these apart. Uh, you gotta take your brake booster hose off right there. All right, let me get this stuff disconnected. Okay, so before taking this plenum off, a couple more things you wanna disconnect. You got this, uh, this connector right here, you're gonna have to disconnect that and pop it out of its uh, thing and you're gonna have to uh, uh, pop it out of the clip right there. You got one vacuum hose here and one vacuum hose back here right there where my fingers pointing right there uh, you got to take those off and then you're gonna have to lift this up and detach the knock sensor so let me get this up and I'll show you what else needs to get disconnected okay this is the back of the intake plenum so this is the knock sensor connector right here it's gonna pull off this bracket here and then you could just disconnect it uh, here is an idle control you got to disconnect that you can reach under the intake and disconnect that you got one vacuum line here here's the two coolant houses that we cut so that way we can just put new ones and slip it right in uh, we'll just lube those up real good uh, let's see here's the one vacuum line here here's the other one there we got an evap hose here uh, we have, there's that one connector that was by the AC compressor, and oh, there was one more vacuum line up front right there, and that is about it. Yeah, you just really want to, when you do this job, you really want to be careful, because what, the thing is, when you touch it, and you get done, it's going to leak. Like that hose right there, that's gonna leak, it's gonna cause a problem, but this guy doesn't wanna fix anything except for the main thing, which is the valve covers. So here's the last plug on this side. I went ahead and left it in, just to keep it in. Uh, here's the one hose, and, and then here is the other, right there. That one is a straight hose, right there and that one is an elbow hose so go ahead and get those off while you have this out uh, the reason you cut them is because even if you get them off when you put them back on they're gonna leak so it's best to just get new ones lube them up they'll slip right on put clamps on and you're done all right so from here this side's not too bad you just got a couple tens to get this uh, vacuum hose assembly line out of the way. And then you're gonna just be taking out all the Phillips screws, okay? 
And then getting the valve cover gaskets out of the valve covers, that's the other tricky part. One more tip is for these, for this PCV hose in the front, you have one here, and you have one here. There is one 10 millimeter there, and another 10 millimeter right there. If you disconnect those, this pipe assembly pulls back enough so you can get this back enough to get the valve cover out. So now I'm gonna get all these uh, connectors off of here, and we'll go ahead and get these valve covers off and get them in the parts washer. All right, so here we go, valve covers are off. All right, so from here, you're just gonna wanna make sure that you clean it really, really good. You're gonna get all your grommets changed out. Uh, make sure that all your spark plugs are blown out and there's no garbage that fell in your spark plugs down where your spark plugs are. Make sure there's no garbage down there. Uh, so that way your plug wires connect and you don't have any issues. That is about it. So from here, we're just gonna basically do everything backwards or the, you know, in reverse, which is usually a lot easier than taking it apart. All right, just make sure you clean your valve covers real good. Make sure you inspect all those hoses and everything. All right, let me get these ready to back on. All right, so when you're doing your valve cover gaskets, these little tabs right here, just bend them in and then put your gasket in and then just tap them outward with a hammer and it just holds your gaskets in place. Just like that all the way around. And to clean everything, to get all this clean, I just use like scotch Bright pads and I cut little rectangles out like that and I just spray it with Bright Clean and I go all the way around, it makes it look good as new. All right, let me get ready to put these on. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, if you've never done this before, I hope it helps you feel comfortable doing this job. Also, by watching this video, it's going to help you not take apart things you don't have to take apart. Uh, the first time I ever did one of these, I flipped the plenum over. I tried to take off the pipes that attached the hoses. I was reaching my hand under there, taking bolts out, taking the throttle body off, taking the EGR valve off. I was doing all this unnecessary work. And these engines are super common for everything to break. So the more stuff you take off, the more things you have to deal with. The first time I started working on these things, every time I touched them, I would get down and have a coolant leak, have to fix it, have another coolant leak, have to fix it because you didn't get the hose on there just right or the hose had a tear in it. You didn't realize it. So anyways, that's the video and that's how you do it. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the bell. You get notified of all my future content, which you're definitely going to want to see. Also, check me out on Instagram for my daily life as a mechanic, where you get to see a first look at the tools that I use and some of the awesome stuff I see and the dumb stuff I see. Sometimes the mistakes I make. I don't know. I'm human. Uh, also, check out my, uh, my merchandise store where you can get yourself a t-shirt or a coffee cup. Support Nuts and Bolts with Tone. Uh, leave me a comment down below if you have anything you want to, uh, about this video, if you've uh, come across this, if you have any, any pointers for me. So anyways, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.